Hello everybody and welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin and I'm an Inkscape developer and I develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Welcome back to this uh, set of updates. You can see I'm back in the hat from my previous video and we're ready to talk about some of the work that's been got going on. This is stuff that I've been up to and also some, some of the stuff that's going on in the Inkscape project more widely. Um, first of all, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to everybody who sponsors my work. Basically, there's not some corporation that's paying for me. I'm not sponsored by somebody else. There's no government grants. It's you. You guys are paying for my time to work on Inkscape. And the best part is, is that as part of that, you get to decide what I work on. And for the last two years, I have been asked to work on color support for CMYK, various color profiles and PDF output. And of course, if you've been following these videos, you know that we have done quite a lot of that work already. Um, of course, it's taking a long time. And part of that is because I want to do this work properly. Um, no hacks, no half arsing, actual PDF output that works, actual color managed support that makes sense, and hopefully the ability to grow into more functionality. And, uh, and that's what I've got for you this week. So we're gonna talk about color support. And you'll remember from um, I think it was last year when we were when we were finishing up the color um, refactoring in the Inkscape codebase. Um, Inkscape supports a bunch of different color spaces, and the refactoring allowed us to um, codify what those meant and sort of create a standard interface so you could choose which of those color things to use internally. It basically makes the programming of functionality much easier because it's uh, standardized between all of the different color space spaces. Um, so I've been continuing that color work because the next goal is to be able to produce uh, rendering, right? We want to be able to render in color spaces, not just RGB, uh, not just even ex extended RGB, but things like CMYK, um, maybe other things as too, like if you want to do a gradient in linear RGB instead of um, gamma, or if you wanted to do HSV gradients, which are kind of interesting if you've ever seen any of those alternate color space uh, interpolations. We want to be able to support those too. Um, but we also need a greater amount of data available in our renderings. Okay, so what does this all mean? The, so, okay, so the, the data that we've been using for rendering has been 8-bit. So we're basically using 8 bits per channel for RGB rendering. This isn't enough data really to be able to produce a uh, better output because even if you convert it into CMYK, even if you convert it into something else, um, the data accuracy goes down significantly and you just you just don't get the accuracy that you would need. You see this in things like gradients where you get sharp uh, cutoffs and banding and stuff. That happens because there's just not enough data available in the image ren rendering to be able to do those kinds of operations. Um, so. What I've done is I've moved Inkscape from using integers for all of its rendering operations with Cairo um, to using uh, doubles or floating points operations. These are 64 bits per channel. And um, the immediate if effect is that uh, PDF output with Cairo has slightly better RGB output, but that's so incredibly minor. No, the real, the real key is that now that that is available, we can actually use that extra data for doing uh, other channel interpolations for things like CMYK and for linear RGB and for the output when it's converted back into sRGB to be much more faithful. Uh, we also have the ability to output in the future, this is not right now, but in the future, we now open the way for being able to output things like 64-bit PNGs and uh, higher resolution uh, color resolution, not spatial resolution, uh, JPEGs and other file formats. This is because rendering is about creating raster files from vector images, right? Um, I also improved the ability to input uh, PDF uh, PDFs with colors. So there was a bunch of fixes that were needed, some crashes that were happening with ICC pro profiles in PDF land, and also being able to support things like uh, device CMYK and sRGB and various other things. Um, and I basically refactored all of that. So I'm using some new color stuff to make sure that that works efficiently. And this is all about making sure that there's a transparent flow, that if you've got a PDF file with uh, these extra color values that we support them. Obviously, I made this optional um, because, of course, some people might be expecting all of their colors to be converted to sRGB. That is a functionality that might actually be very useful to a lot of people. So it's a checkbox. 
Oh yeah, I fixed uh, the color API. It was incorrectly labeling ICC pro profiles as their uh, target implementation. So for instance, a CMYK color profile would be identifying itself as device C CMYK. That's just wrong. So that's been fixed. Um, I also managed to get the um, better color support inside of the actual transformations themselves. Um, this has been a long time pro process of basically trying to make sure that we're using the best calculations for our color support. I wanted to make sure that we were using um, ICC profiles for linear RGB, for XYZ or XYZ, um, and for lab color support. Those basically allow us to not have quite so much code inside of Inkscape for doing color conversions, um, which if you know pro pro programming, you really shouldn't be coding this sort of stuff yourself. You should be trying to depend on industry standards. The problem is, is that a lot of these color spaces are actually like one of 12 different settings that you can dial in between each of them. And the standards between CSS, the thing that SVG is supposed to be adhering to, and the standards that we've been using inside of Inkscape and the standards that various other converters use are all different. And most of the programmers that implemented them didn't know that you had all of these dials that you could change. Um, things like the white point, things like the, um, the angle of... Um, cone uh, uh, when they were doing testing for seeing how good the eye can see things and um, all of those settings matter for how the colors get converted so a lot of research so there's been a lot more research than code and there will be a lot more code that's needed in order to make sure that all of these things are currently uh, that are currently blocked from being merged because of the um, I, I broke a body I broke a lot of stuff okay so I broke everything in the color management stuff but uh, I fixed a lot of stuff that now makes a lot more sense. So I understand better what CSS is trying to do, as well as some of the weirdnesses in the way that they calculate num numbers. And also uh, with how uh, LCMS, Little CMS 2, the library that we use to support color management stuff, expects various things to happen, including some really interesting values for like how it automatically converts uh, percentages into like decimals. Uh, te technical details. Uh, just know that I spent a long time doing stuff that, like, somebody was able to just point out that if you just mask these bits in this flag and everything is fixed. So, um, okay, so that's enough color stuff. You can see that there's a lot of, like, really, really detailed stuff happening. And I think that this is where we get into the point where if there was an expert in color involved in the Inkscape project today, um, well, this job would have been much faster to do. But because we're such a small team and because it's just me being paid to work on Inkscape, um, I just have to do it myself. I just have to like research and basically become a sort of expert myself. And unfortunately, this means it's taking a lot longer. Um, so apologies. And also, hopefully, this is uh, worth it. Um, some other stuff that I've been up to. I fixed a crash in the XML dialogue. Um, I fixed uh, various fixes in 1.5. This is a lot of widget stuff that's broken. Uh, 1.5 is unstable as all hell, but we're trying to get through some of the backlog of things that need to be fixed. I added a feature. It's currently going through merge review. Uh, hopefully it'll get merged, but it basically allows you to stop Inkscape from loading any extensions at all. This should speed up Inkscape loading on Windows especially, but any pl platform really. And this is useful if you're using command line interface to quickly like go through a bunch of images. Um, you don't really need to be able to load extensions if y you are only doing PNGs, right? Like it's not, it's just not necessary. So that extension will speed up because it will just not load any extensions. Um, what's been going on in the rest of Inkscape? So there's a new India uh, summit that we have approved fun funding for. Uh, um, Ishan and Vibhav are going to be um, looking after that event. It's a part of the India. Uh, free Software India 2025, I think. Um, you know, they've got five Inkscape mem members that are going to attend. I am excited to see another Inkscape event that's happening, especially one that's happening outside of Europe. I want to encourage that kind of thing. We need more participation from the entire world. Um, we've also approved budget to hire the Software Freedom Conservancy's website developer for getting the new version of the Inkscape website that's based on a new version of J Django deployed to a new version of CentOS, I think. Yeah. 
and uh, with um, Oregon State University involved in p uh, provisioning that machine. So there's a whole bunch of background work to make sure the infrastructure is functioning. Um, we've also been looking into getting uh, our own Mastodon instance set up so that we can uh, involve ourselves in the Fediverse without so many blockings. Basically, as a, as a brand, we're not so much interested in being protected from abuse because we don't care. Like, you will just, you know, not read comments and things. But we do care about us being blocked from being visible for, for as many people as possible. So to set our own priorities, we have put aside a very small amount of money in order to be able to pay for a single uh, user instance uh, that somebody else will host. So that should be good, I think. The more work that we don't have to do as a volunteers, the better, I feel. And um, yeah, uh, work-wise, it's been honestly a bit quiet. There is some work going on, but a lot of people are very busy. Sometimes this is because it's the summer, um, and sometimes it's because people are not at university. Um, we have fewer students, etc. cetera. Um, but I'll keep you apprised of updates as they come in. And um, please consider joining my Patreon and my LibrePay to help fund my work. And um, thank you very much for watching.